So that, guys, was qualifying for the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix. And qualifying was not great. There was some good points in qualifying, but we definitely did have a very controversial ending to qualifying. Now, I just need to say, I am recording this before any possible penalties for Max Verstappen if he does get one or going faster under yellow flags. And we're going to talk about it in just a moment and how all the teams did in qualifying today in Mexico City. But let's first get into the results. So Max Verstappen for now is on pole position for the first time in Mexico. Charles Leclerc P2, very exciting front row that is for Verstappen and Leclerc. And then Vettel third, Hamilton fourth, Albon fifth, Bottas sixth. And then completing the top 10, Sainz and Norris and the two McLarens. And then Kibiat and Gasly and the two Toro Rossos. Perez in his home race, P11. Hulkenberg 12th, Ricardo 13th. Raikkonen in 14th, Antonio Giovinazzi in 15th, and then knocked out in Q1 were Stroll, Magnussen, Grosjean, Russell, and Kubica. But now, let's get into the teams and how they did. So first off, Mercedes, and well, they were quite a bit off the pace from where I was expecting. I thought they would be right in the fight for pole position, but when it came to the moment... They had really no speed at all. Ferrari clearly faster and Max Verstappen was half a second quicker than Lewis Hamilton at the end of qualifying there. So, yeah, not good at all for this team. And even though in the race they will show better speed because they're always good when it comes to pace in the race, P4 and P6 is one of the worst qualifying sessions they've had in quite a long time. So, yeah, not looking that great going into the race. And for Lewis Hamilton, I think Lewis did the best he could today. But again, the car is just not quick enough. Of course, Valtteri Bottas crashed at the end of qualifying, trying too hard, got up against the wall and ended up, of course, going into the barriers, trying too hard to try and get a good lap time. But yeah, the car in qualifying trim just isn't quick. It will be quicker tomorrow, but... I'm not sure it would be quick enough to win the race, especially if Max Verstappen does keep his pole position. Next up, Ferrari. Uh, Ferrari will be disappointed with, the, uh, with this result, sorry, because given how the weekend has gone so far, it looked as though Ferrari had the best car for qualifying going into this Grand Prix after practice one, two, and three. But when it mattered, Max Verstappen produced two very good laps and you have to say that Ferrari just I, I don't know if they were kind of surprised by Max Verstappen but it, they didn't exactly look great in Q3 they definitely were quicker than Mercedes but I think they may be a bit surprised by the pace of Max Verstappen but just when it mattered not there for Ferrari and quite a surprise because as I've been saying in practice so far Ferrari have been very quick and in qualifying as of late, Ferrari have been very strong. The last time Ferrari were not on pole position was Hungary, where funnily enough, it was Max Verstappen on pole position. So, yeah, quite a surprise that Ferrari have not got pole. But in the race tomorrow, in the run down to turn one, with the straight line speed they have, they could easily get straight into the lead. So it's not over yet for them. The two drivers, Leclerc, Leclerc did the best he could, I think. Uh, Sebastian Vettel, I think, got a bit unlucky at the end there because Leclerc, of course, made a mistake on his final run and really did blow a chance at pole position. So you have to criticise Leclerc a bit for that, but I think Vettel, you have to say, a bit unlucky. He's been faster than Leclerc basically all weekend, and then the yellow flags come out at the end, and that ruins his hope of pole position. But again... Starting from P3 is not that bad of a position to start from. But now let's go into Red Bull. Now, first off, Alex Albon. I do have to say, I think Alex was a bit too slow today because clearly the Red Bull car is working well. And I think Albon should have been at the very least in P4 ahead of Lewis Hamilton because clearly Red Bull have a quicker car than Mercedes do at least in qualifying today in Mexico. So if I was Red Bull, I would be disappointed with Albon. I think he, you know, he definitely could have done better. Again, the yellow flags did kind of hamper his chances, but he wasn't exactly going that quick anyway. Um, 
the uh, disappointing for Al, but I'm not sure actually if he did set his first um, or his final time after or before the yellow flags. I think it might have been before, but still disappointing for Alban. Max Verstappen though did very well to get on pole position, no doubt about it. Great performance, but he clearly went faster in his final run under yellow flags. I've seen the onboard video as he comes into the final cor uh, corner. There is clearly a yellow flag waving and he goes on, completes the lap and does a new lap record. He has to receive some kind of punishment, whether that's a lap time deletion or a, play, a five place penalty. He has to get punished for that. I'm sorry, he has to because you cannot just forget the rules and forget that type of rule, which is very important to safety to just allow him to keep his time when clearly... He was going too fast under yellow flags. It is clear to see. And if he doesn't get punished, then I will be absolutely astonished, honestly. Because if they allow him to keep that pole position and keep that lap time, then what's the point in rules? We might as well just throw away the rules, screw the rules, screw logic, screw, you know, intelligence or thought. Let's just, from now on, just go out there and have a you know a demolition derby because if they do not give Max some kind of punishment for an obvious infringement, then what is the point of rules anymore? Tell me what the point of rules is, guys, if he doesn't get punished in the comment section down below because I don't see how he can get away with this. I don't see how he can. I'm not saying that Max should be put to the back of the grid or anything, but... At the very least, delete his lap time that he did. At the very least, please. You've got to, please, punish him in some way to uphold the rules. Because the FIA are so bad when it comes to applying the correct rules. They've got to do it right this time. Because if they don't, then, again, what is the point of rules? Might, have, might as well just race with no rules at all in every race weekend. But anyway... Let's now get into the midfield. First off, Renault, very poor weekend. They've not looked that quick at all this weekend. They're comfortably behind McLaren and Toro Rosso in terms of speed. And they qualified in P12 and P13. Considering that they dominated the midfield fight this time last year at this Grand Prix, how incredibly poor have Renault been? They're so bad at the moment, Renault. They've got no speed in the car when it comes to qualifying. And... I don't even know what to say anymore. They're just so crap, a Renault. They've got no pace, seemingly no motivation left in the team for 2019. They're questioning their own future. Of course, the disqualification at Suzuka doesn't help. This team is really down in the dumps. Uh, the only positive, I guess, going into the race is that they can start on a harder compound of tie, which really could help their race result. But I really don't know what to say about Renault anymore. They're just so bad. At the moment in Formula 1. And I don't see how they deserve to beat Toro Rosso in the Constructors. Because Toro Rosso are doing, I think, this season slightly better with a lot less money and backing. So, yeah, Renault having a terrible season. But this team are having a very good one. McLaren locking out the fourth row of the grid. Carlos Sainz P7, Lando Norris P8. Very good lap at the end by Lando Norris 2. Get onto the fourth row because I didn't think he was going to be able to after the first run in Q3. So very good there by Lando. And of course, Carlos Sainz, P7. Great lap again and great performance all around by McLaren. And given the speed of the car, even though they're going to start on this soft tyre, which will go away very quickly, they'll be absolutely fine. Their car is comfortably faster than anything else in that midfield. Next up is Alpha. Alpha did, I think, well to get both cars into Q2, but clearly they do not have a car that can compete with Renault, Toro Rosso, or McLaren, or maybe even Racing Point. Um, so yeah, they did well to get both cars into Q2, but yeah, Alpha, they just don't have the speed, and not really a surprise, is it? This car just isn't suited to a track like this. And for Haas, well... Absolutely terrible, and they're in for a terrible race tomorrow, qualifying P17 and P18. No speed whatsoever. Next up, Toro Rosso. P9 and P10, fifth row lockout. That is probably their best qualifying performance of 2019. 
and it's exactly what they need at the moment if they are going to beat Renault in the constructors and given how they normally are in a race in terms of speed and performance I think Toro Rosso are going to be a dark horse tomorrow in that midfield I wouldn't be surprised if one of the Toro Rossos could beat one of the McLarens tomorrow um, even though the McLaren should have the speed Toro Rosso they're not far off they're not that far off. They're definitely slower. There's no doubt about that. But they are not that far off a driver, for example, like Lando Norris. Carlos Sainz should be way ahead dominating. But I think they can definitely get after Norris. But as long as they get both cars into the top 10 and they beat Renault in terms of points scored in that Grand Prix tomorrow, then that is a great race for them. But yeah, great day for Toro Rosso. Hopefully they keep it up. And great to see that Gasly is well or a better health wise than he was in the morning uh, with an upset stomach and did well to qualify in the top 10 and then your final midfield team racing point Sergio Perez I think will be very happy qualifying P11 because one the racing point was never really that quick anyway this weekend in qualifying pace and he will be able to start on whatever tyre he wants to and is the first person to be able to do that so Perez at his home race, I think, is in for a good race for sure, as long as he doesn't get caught up in some kind of start line crash. But Droll, we have to say, should have done better. I mean, the racing point's clearly faster than the Alpha. So I think Stroll, you have to say, very disappointing to be P16 when he really should have been around 13th place, probably at best. Uh, but yes, yeah, 16th place is not good enough. He will do well in the race tomorrow, but. Not sure he'll come through to finish in the points. And of course, Williams are at the very back. But guys, that's it for this qualifying review. And I think we are in, if that front row for Staff and Leclerc stays the same, I think we are in for a very good 2019 Mexican Grand Prix tomorrow.